Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, I am going to lay out for you some of my favorite High Sierra scrambles or peaks that I would recommend in the more technical realm, meaning third class and above, um, and I'm not going to go into roped fifth class rock climbs. This video is designed for the um, aspiring peak bagger or the type of person who wants to step up their game and enter some more technical peaks. I would encourage you to check out my trip planning video as well as my introduction to technical peaks or third class peak video. So if you are the type of person who thinks you have the experience and are ready to step up your game and attempt some third or fourth class peaks in the High Sierra, I got the recommendations for you. I have seven peaks here in order from uh, easy to hard and I'm going to explain to you uh, why I think attempting these peaks in this order is a great way to get into peak bagging. I am not going to give you all the information or beta, but I am going to hit some of the highlights, briefly talk you through the route. Um, the reason why I'm not gonna spoon feed all the information is one, I think it is always important for people to do their own research to frame their own decisions. And I also feel like there should always be a little bit of adventure in the mountains, but um, I will outline sort of what you're getting into. I will have some video clips to show you the type of terrain you're getting into and who I you know, would versus wouldn't recommend all of these hikes for. Okay, peak number one is Mount Gould. So Mount Gould is accessible from the Kirasage Pass Trail. So park at Onion Valley, head up to Kirasage Pass. As soon as you get to the pass, if you have Onion Valley behind you, take a right and head up the trail. You'll probably see a faint use trail as a fair number of people go up this. And the reason I would recommend this as like your first sort of technical peak is there's very little actual third class terrain on this mountain. Getting to the summit register requires about 15, 20 feet of third class or proper scrambling to get there. And everything else is really class one to class two. The reason why I would recommend this as your first peak is because it will sort of make sure that you have the skills in terms of navigation, route finding, hiking before you really get into the technical third class. So, you know, most of the challenge here is going to be on the class one, class two terrain. Everything is pretty solid. It's pretty safe. I mean, there is a little bit of loose sand and maybe some loose rocks, but you know, stuff isn't really gonna break off. You're not gonna put yourself in a lot of danger. I think the worst thing that could happen to somebody on this peak is they might do a little bit of uh, too much unnecessary scrambling by hopping up a false summit and then being like, oh, the real summit's actually over there. If you enjoyed that, you thought that was fun, I would recommend you know checking out more third class peaks. But if that kind of scared you, made you a little nervous, um, maybe this type of stuff is not for you. And this is a great way to sort of test the waters without fully committing. Peak number two is the south ridge of Mount Star from the Mono Pass Trail. So this leaves from the Rock Creek Mosquito Flat uh, Trailhead, which is the highest paved road in California, fun fact. So start hiking out of Rock Creek and then take the right turn up Mono Pass. Do not go to Little Lakes Valley. And then um, you're gonna kind of be traversing below Mount Star and then the trail is gonna start to do like a right hand hairpin, maybe three quarters of a mile before Mono Pass. Use your best judgment, um, leave the trail wherever you want to and start heading up. The reason I would recommend this as the second most beginner friendly peak is um, once again, it's relatively straightforward, pretty safe. Um, the, you you have a great option here to make decisions. Um, you can very easily be in you know the fourth class terrain if you wanna do that, or if you can find the path of least resistance, it is very comfortable, very solid, good third class. Also, um, this is a pretty easy mountain to bail from if you feel as though this is in a, uh, you get you're in a little over your head. You can almost always bail to uh, hikers or climbers left and um, head onto some sand and head right back down to the trail. The top of Mount Star is beautiful, highly recommended. Um, you get a great view of Mount Morgan across Little Lakes Valley, and then you can see you know, Bear Creek Spire, Mount Dade, Mount Abbott, all of those, it's really a great place to be. And you can get there um, doing the South Ridge route with you know minimal commitment and some fun third slash fourth class moves. Peak number three is a Sierra Scramblers classic and is going to be the West Chute of Cloud Ripper from the Bishop Pass slash South Lake Trailhead. Um, start going up toward Bishop Pass, take the left toward the Chocolate Lakes. Once you get to the Chocolate Lakes, um, the chute is very prominently right in front of you. And um, 
you just pretty much have to head straight for it. Um, what I like about this route, one, it's it's phenomenal, super high high quality, great sections of scrambling, but it's also very beginner friendly. The route finding is not very challenging. You're in that chute. Um, all you need to remember is when it forks in the middle, go right. And then when you get to the top, the actual summit is on the left, not the right. In between that, you will have great sections of second and third class terrain. In the third class terrain, while it's a little more sustained than the peaks that I previously mentioned, is also not, it doesn't go on forever. The terrain's kind of very, very ledgy, you kind of do 20 feet of third class, then walk a little bit, then do 20 more feet of third class. Um, this is great because you know you don't feel very exposed, it feels pretty safe. This also gets sort of harder and harder as you go um, where the bottom, there's not quite as much third class as there is short at the top. The last part is, you know, textbook third class, very solid, but also, you know, pretty steep and um, you know requires that you have all your wits about you because a fall up there would not be a fun call to search and rescue. Once you get up to the summit, you have a great view of the Palisade Crest and a lot of the surrounding peaks. It's a great place to be, highly, highly recommended. Peak number four, I'm going to place sort of in the intermediate category. And uh, peak number four also has a little more commitment to it as well. You can do it in a day trip. I would not recommend it. Peak number four would be the North Rib of Mount Tyndall. This is probably the best third class experience I've ever had in the Sierra. Um, beautiful area and the rock is solid. Um, the rib is very defined. There's like no root finding necessary, but it is third class for many hundreds of feet, which is why I'm kind of putting this in the middle of the route. Also logistically, um, this peak's a little tricky to get to. Um, it's a, the easiest access from the east side is via Shepherd's Pass. Shepherd's Pass is a very serious, like 12-ish mile, 6,000 foot elevation gain to get to the pass. Once you're there, Mount Tyndall is right there and it's only a few more miles to the top but I'm um, doing this in a day, you really need to have some strength. Also, if you're attempting Mount Tyndall and you're doing it as an overnight, you should probably link that with Mount Williamson to bag another 14er, and Mount Williamson is a lot more serious. I actually have not scrambled Mount Williamson. Um, I didn't have quite enough research and the weather the day I was up there was not ideal, so I ended up bailing. Um, so I'm gonna have to go back and I'd love to save you the effort of having to hike Shepherd's Pass twice by doing both of them, but Williamson is very serious and you really wanna be experienced before you attempt that peak. Moving on to peak number five, I would recommend peak five, six, and seven to be sort of like you need, you need experience. Please do a couple of the peaks I listed below before attempting any of these. The first one that I would recommend for the experienced scrambler, east face of Mount Morrison. If you are driving south on Highway 395 around the Mammoth Lakes area, Mount Morrison is unmistakable. It's beautiful. A friend once described it to me as if you asked a little kid to draw a mountain, they would draw Mount Morrison. It just begs to be climbed and you wanna get up there. Um, however, Mount Morrison is actually a limestone peak, uh, which is a lot more crumbly and not quite as robust as a lot of the granite that you find in other regions of the Sierra. I'm putting this very high on the list because the um, assessing of the rock quality is going to be very important as well as the root finding. You, you could end up in some horrendous, breakable, very dangerous terrain if you're not thinking ahead, looking for signs of other humans, where they've been. Um, finding the path of least resistance is definitely challenging. And if you get off the path of least resistance, you really could put yourself into a slightly precarious situation. However, once you get up there, seeing you know Convict Lake, the Owens Valley, Red Slate Mountain, all of those is beautiful. And Morrison is a very proud peak and you can show all your friends, hey, you see that mountain over there? I climbed it. Moving on to number six, we have the Red Rock variation of the Northeast Face on Middle Palisade. This is a rad peak, beautiful, beautiful area, very serious day trip, and you definitely need some experience to make this happen. I think it's about a 14-ish mile, 6,000 feet of elevation gain day to do, and you're doing many of those miles off trail. I think you're doing about six of those off trail and you're boulder hopping or scrambling the whole time. I'm gonna recommend the Red Rock variation because um, with the current state of the glacier, it's a lot harder to access the area that Secor recommends. 
um, and it seems like a lot more people these days are doing the Red Rock variation. Um, the Red Rock part is honestly probably the hardest part. So if you can get up there, you can make it all the way to the summit. Um, but once again, please remember as you're going up, you will ultimately need to go down, which some people find to be a little harder. And once you're actually on this face in the shoot, it is beautiful. Be careful as there is a lot of loose rock and you can sort of trade um, loose rock or sort of more difficult terrain. If you're going up and you're on the left side, you're in class three or maybe class two terrain, um, but it's not gonna be as secure, it's gonna be a lot looser. If you stay in the middle of the chute, you're definitely in the third, fourth class realm of the world, but the, um, the rock is a lot more solid. I would recommend going up the middle of the chute if you're comfortable with that, and if you are not quite as comfortable as that, stick to the left side. This is a lot of scrambling. I would say it's probably about a thousand feet of third class. There is no reprieve. I mean, you get to the ridge and you're right there at the summit. Um, I would recommend skirting maybe 40 or 50 feet to climbers left of the summit. Um, I went up on the right and then went down on the left. And I definitely say the left side is a little easier, but that's a great place to be. And Middle Palisade is a very big prize and a very, very proud ascent. The last peak I would recommend, and I would really recommend this for experienced scramblers only, is the mega classic Easteret of Mount Russell. Mount Russell is a beautiful 14,000 foot peak right next to Mount Whitney. The views of Mount Whitney are spectacular. It's definitely a big prize for a lot of people, and the Easteret is the easiest way, and it is pretty sustained, mandatory third class with massive exposure. Um, this route has been fatal for many individuals. I believe it was the summer of 2021, a very experienced mountaineer actually passed away on this route. So it is really should not be taken lightly and it's not for the faint of heart, but it's spectacular. It's beautiful. It's sustained. You need to be comfortable doing many, many exposed moves, um, but it is totally, totally worth it. And I would highly recommend. Um, you can either kind of stay on the ridge or stay a little below the ridge, but once again, make good route finding decisions. I ended up backtracking three or four times, both on the way up and on the way down, just because I was unable to find the path of least resistance. So, you know, take your time, be careful, assess. If something looks a little hairy and it looks like it's not gonna get any easier, remember it is third class. And if you backtrack a little bit, you might be able to find a easier route. But once you get up there, you're gonna be so glad you're up there. All right, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I really hope that you get to try some of these peaks for yourself because the High Sierra truly is one of the most spectacular places on planet Earth. Please subscribe to my channel. Um, I have a lot of great adventure as well as trip planning content coming out that you don't wanna miss. Um, if you have any questions, recommendations, you like my list, you don't like my list, I would love to hear about it down in the comments section. And as always, I hope to see you out there on the trails.